the five steps that you can take today to be more productive. And tip number one is we need to organize our workspace. You know, it doesn't matter if you work in your car, at home, or in an office. We need to keep a de decluttered workspace, right? We want to make sure that everything is in a place and everything is easily accessible when we need it. And one way we can do that is to remove all the things that we don't need. So what you're going to do is you're going to create two piles. You're either going to go into your car, your office, uh, your home office, or the office of where you work, and you're going to look at your desk and look at all the things that are laying around. And then you're going to move the things into two piles. One pile is going to be garbage. The other pile is going to be things that you can give away or donate. And then you simply trash what is trash and you donate the things you can, do you can donate. Now I know this is tough and it's very difficult to give up things that you think you may need later. But if you haven't seen it in a while or it's, it's cluttering up your desk, I promise you'll thank me later. Now when we're organizing, we don't want to forget our computers, right? If you're like I used to be, I used to have tons and tons of files on my desktop home screen and it made it difficult finding anything that I really needed. Someone would come over to my desk and say, Chad, do you have this file? And I'd just be clicking, clicking, clicking and I'd have to search and wait for it to go through all the files and it was just a nightmare. So make sure you don't forget to also organize the files in your computer. One thing you could do is you could go in and label the folders a certain way. So for example, you could label the most important folder 01 and then the file name. And then you can go to 02 in the file name, then 03 in the file name, and so on. And that way, it's a prioritized list of folders. And when you hit arrange, it will arrange those from 01 to 0 whatever you have down at the bottom. So that will give you a nice sort of prioritized list of folders that you can easily access because you know which ones are most important and which ones are least important. Another cool action that high performers take is they create workflows, so systems that they use to be more productive. Now this can be as simple as an in and an out box, or it could be as simple as a calendar that you put all your important dates on. If it's that simple, that's fine. It doesn't need to be complicated, or it could be a bit more complicated and go through something like a Kanban system. Now I use a Kanban system for myself. There's one back here and I use one at work as well. I love the Kanban system because it gives me visual cues. In other words, it's not inside of a phone. Maybe I'm just old school, but I believe in that visual management. That when you can see it and it's always in front of you, you're more likely to respond and take that action serious and try to get it out of one column into another column. Now, Kanban is a Japanese word, and when translated to English, it means card system. And I have my Kanban board divided up into seven key categories. I have a to-do block, which is to-do items. I have three monthly blocks, so it's the current month and then the two months that follow that month. So in other words, if it was like January, February, March, I'll have that on the board. Just remember that it's always one current month and two following months. And then I have three columns and those are divided into prioritized, in process, and completed. And the reason I like this Kanban system is because, you know, when I'm at my desk or even if I'm away from my desk, there's always someone grabbing me and telling me, hey, I need this or can you do this? So what I like to do is just if I'm away from my desk, I'll just write it down into my notebook. I'll always carry a notebook with me. If I'm at my desk, my Kanban board is sitting right in front of me. When they ask me, hey, can you do this? Or can you help me out with this? Or, you know, they're looking for some information or whatever. If I'm working on something and I can't get to it right then, I will pull out a little sticky note and I will write it down on that sticky note what action uh, that they want, like what they need from me. And I'll take that and put it in the to-do block. And as I start to clear things out of my in-process, uh, when I start moving things from my in-process column over to my completed column, then I will move that sticky note over to, you know, and prioritize it among what I have already done. So a lot of times that's going to go at the bottom if there's a lot of things going on because obviously someone's already asked me for something, so I, you know, I don't want to put them at the top of the list. Now, if somebody oversees, because I do, you know, so I work for a global company, sometimes overseas I'll get um, requests. If that happens, it might take precedence over something that's in the prioritized column, so I might stick it at the top. But the idea is, is the idea of this is that you always have your prioritized list of actions, your to-do actions, and then what's in process and then what's completed. So it's really easy to see easy to see what you complete each week. Now, what if someone comes to me and gives me something that's not really a just do it, like something that I can't get done in a couple of minutes or even an hour or two hours. It becomes like a project, right? So that's why I have those monthly blocks. So that might go into to do and then it'll sit there until I'm done doing what I'm doing and I'll pull that sticky note down, look at it and evaluate where it should go. Is it something that is a just do it, I can get it done right away? Or is it something that I need to add to like the three month block? Is, you know, if it's January, is it something I can get done within three to four weeks if we're at the beginning of the month? Or is it something that might take me you know, two to three months to do and I might have to add that to March? And what I can do is go and look at those items that are in the, you know, in the project or in the monthly blocks and I can lay those out and start you know, setting project timelines and things like that. But it's always right in front of me. It sits at the back of my desk and it's always right in my face. And that's why I like this visual man management system called the Kanban. All right, so now for tip number two. 
do not multitask. High performers don't multitask. Despite how productive you think you are when you're working on two items, it's simply not true. In fact, it's impossible for us to focus 100% of our effort on two things at the same time. Now, I'm not saying you can't have multiple projects at the same time. You absolutely can, and most people do. I'm just saying that you cannot split 100% of your energy into two separate activities at the same time. And tip number three is know what time of the day you're the most productive. I mean, we have to face it, right? We are not 100% productive 100% of every minute of every day. So we need to understand what time of the day we generate the most output with the least input, but still get the best quality of work. Now, knowing your body and your mind in this step is very critical because you're gonna to need to know when you can focus on those high priority items, those ones that are gonna take a lot of energy out of you. And if you know when you're the most productive, that's when you need to focus on those high priority, high energy type of activities. For example, I know that I'm the most energetic and I'm the most productive in the morning. So I set a time in the morning every day to go over my book, to plan out my day. And once I'm done with that, I even go to the gym in the morning because I know that's when I'm the most energetic. I know after work, I'm not gonna wanna do it. And I even practice Brazilian Jiu Jitsu a few days a week in the morning at 5 a.m. because I know that's when I'm gonna have the most energy. And that actually helps me keep the energy throughout the day. So in order to be super productive, you gotta know your body and your mind to know how much energy you have at certain times throughout the day so that you can be super productive. And tip number four is super productive people use their downtime wisely. So when you have a little downtime, instead of watching another TV episode, the best thing you can do is, and highly productive people do this, they take that extra time and they work on things that have been annoying them. So maybe it's a leaky faucet that you've been meaning to fix. Don't sit down and watch another episode of House of Cards when you can be doing something a bit more productive. And at the very least, you can sit down and look through your priority list and make sure all of that is laid out like it should be. Now the point here is that there's always something to do. And I'm not saying don't have any downtime and don't have any fun. No, absolutely have downtime and have fun. But when there's things that need to be done, get that stuff done first, get it off your plate, and then you can relax knowing that all of that's been taken care of. Besides, I mean, that's what vacations are for, downtime, right? And tip number five, this is something that highly productive people do, they wake up early. If you really and truly wanna up your productivity game, start waking up one hour earlier than you do now. I started waking up at 4 a.m. a few years ago and it has drastically improved my productivity. Waking up just one hour earlier every single day gives you 365 extra hours every year to work on being productive. Now to put that in perspective, that's an extra nine 40 hour work weeks that you have to work on something to, that is going to be super productive. I mean, imagine what you could accomplish with nine extra 40 hour work weeks. And all you have to do is wake up one hour earlier, but you can't sacrifice sleep. You have to make sure you're still getting the sleep you need because that's where your energy comes from, that and food, of course. So I'm not asking you to sacrifice sleep, but I am asking you to alter some things in your personal life that are going to allow you to still get to bed early and wake up at a time that's going to allow you to do more productive things with your life, elevate you to where you wanna be versus where you are, if that's what you're interested in. So that's it, that's my five tips for being super productive and these are tips that I have researched over the years and these are tips that I actually have taken into account in my own life to be more productive. Now, make sure that you apply these into your life if you want to be more productive. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and if you like this type of content, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now go be productive, see you in the next video.